Hey everyone, welcome to the first episode of our new FTC Crash Course series, Programming. In today's episode, we're going to be going over how to get started in programming for FTC. Uh, starting off with a quick overview of the series as a whole, um, kind of going over who is it for and the, and the topics that we're going to be covering. And then we're going to dive into an introduction to the FTC control system. So we'll be going over what kind of electronics you'll be able to use in your robot and different control system configurations and how to get started with all of this. Then we'll be talking about some programming options, mainly different programming environments, as well as we're going to be talking about uh, what options you have available in terms of languages and things like that. And then there'll be a short assignment for homework. In each of these videos, the homework assignment will mainly be finishing up something that we did during the video so that you, so that you stay engaged during the week in between each episode. Okay, so starting off, we're going to be going over the, the series as a whole. So as with all of our Crash Course series that we're making this summer, this series is meant to be a broad overview of, F of FTC programming knowledge. So what this means is that we're going to be covering stuff from the absolute basics of how to get started, such as this video, all the way through much more advanced topics that maybe won't be as useful to a um, first year team who's, who's just getting into programming with no prior knowledge. All episodes, however, are, are meant to be watched in order to completion. And so what this means is that if you watch this, this playlist that we have on our channel in order, you, sh you should be able to at least be able to understand and kind of follow along with the more advanced topics. Although, once again, they may not be as useful to you as, um, as an older team who's had more experience and who's looking to improve their programming skills and kind of what areas they're looking into learning. And so just a little note here is that all of our programming examples will be in Java. Um, I'll probably be going back between Android Studio and Alma Java, which we'll, we'll get into in a, in a few slides. But all these will be in Java. These first episodes are really going to be about getting familiar with, with programming in FPC and really in general. The next episode is actually just, just going to be Java basics, just so you understand syntax. We're going to be going over the Java language so that, you're, so that you really know what you're doing when we jump into stuff like with the, with the FTC SDK. And then later on, we're going to be working through more complete examples of how to apply this to your robot with op modes and kind of with each major topic we're going to be covering, especially the more advanced ones, we'll be going over some example op modes with that. And so yeah, this series will come out every Monday, design is Wednesday, and then awards and judging is Fridays, and we do have some mini-series that we'll be sprinkling in from, um, from now and then. Okay, so let's get started with the FTC control system overview. So FTC uses an Android-based control system. I'm sure many of you have used Android in the past on a mobile device. It's an open source operating system that's now owned by Google. And previously in FTC, you could only use two Android phones, one for the driver station, one for the robot controller, but now you have the option of using the control hub, which has an Android controller on it, as your robot controller. And this is, this is really what I'm going to recommend you use for this season, and we'll kind of get into why in a little bit. So like I just mentioned, there are two systems that you have to worry about in the FTC control system. One is the driver station and one is the robot controller. The driver station, that's what sits with you during a match and it's only responsible for taking your inputs on things like a gamepad or, or choosing what, what program you want to run because as you know in FTC, there's two periods, one where your robot operates autonomously on its own and one where you're controlling it in teleop. So, the driver station merely takes takes what you're doing on a controller and then sends it wirelessly to the robot controller, which is on your robot. And so what, what that controller does is then takes the input that, that's gotten from the driver station and then it's running your code. And so your code will, will be able to respond to those inputs from, from sensors or from the driver station, from your gamepad or things like that. And then that's how your code is ran. And that's how you're able to have code that is controlled by humans. And so yeah, as I mentioned, controller can either be a rev hub, a rev control hub, or a phone. So let's start off with the driver station because this stuff is really important to understand. Even though you don't really have to worry about it as much when issues come up, it's really useful to have a to have a, a concrete understanding of how things work and kind of what the system's operating off of. So here's the driver station. As you can see, the FTC driver station app that's from the Play Store is installed onto your driver station phone. So this is you'll have one option. You have to use an Android phone for the driver station. At least right, as of right now. And so, and then what you can do is plug one or two game pads. As you hear, one of your options here is the Logitech gamepad. You can also use an Xbox 360 controller. That's plugged into the driver station, running the, the driver station app, and that'll communicate wirelessly through a uh, through a technology called Wi-Fi Direct with the robot controller. And so, moving on, uh, here's the first option for the robot controller. As you see, it'll be receiving signals from the driver station via Wi-Fi Direct, and your code is what's running on this. 
So you see here is the Rev Control Hub. This is basically a microcontroller that has, it has built in controllers for DC motors, servos, and then sensor inputs, and all that's nicely packaged, as well as an Android controller. So it's, it's basically an Android phone with no screen, just packaged into this thing that can also interface with robot electronics. And so as you see, you then plug all of your robot electronics, uh, like motors, sensors, and things like that into this, and your code is running on it, so you're able to interface this. And also, you're definitely gonna need this if you want more motor ports, since you are allowed up, up to eight, you have to buy a Rev Expansion Hub, which then connects to this. That does not run Android, that merely just gives you more ports to connect more motors. And so here's the other option I was talking about. This is what all teams had to use in years past. This is a bit different for 2021, now that Control Hub is legal for everybody. We have the driver station, once again, uh, it's going to be talking to this phone via Wi-Fi Direct, and this phone is running your code, and since there's a screen, you, like, you'll actually see it running the, the app that, um, that you added code to, whether you compiled it yourself or you use the default one for the Play Store. I'll talk about that a bit later. And so this phone will be running your code, and this phone will also be attached to a Rev Expansion Hub. So the other thing that you had to use for the Control Hub to get more ports, you need two of those in order to have all eight. So one of them will be plugged into the phone, and the other one will be will kind of like be daisy chained to the other one to give you all the ports you need. Um, and so that, that's kind of how that works. So as you can kind of see, the Control Hub really just combines the phone and the first expansion hub together. And it's a lot more reliable because there's, there's less connections. So there's less chance of, of things failing. And also Rev has direct access to the Control Hub's operating system. So if, if something were to go wrong, like a bug was found, or there, was, there were issues, Rev is able to roll out a fix. Whereas right now with so many different phones being allowed, there's a lot more issues that could arise and Rev can't really do anything about it. Okay, so hopefully that was a good overview of the control system. Definitely feel free to consult other resources on an overview of that. And so now we're going to be talking about the electronics you have that plug into those hubs from Rev that I talked about and that you're able to use. Um, because in programming, even if you're not directly responsible for the wiring or electronics in your team, which a lot of programming leads are, it's very important to understand what your robot could be using on it so that you understand what these different things are should be used for and how they should be interfaced within your code. And so motors, so motors are really for applications where you want a lot of torque and speed. Of course, they provide rotational motion, but different systems can turn that to linear motion. You want a full DC motor for, for those applications and you're only allowed eight of them. Turbo motors are generally more open from what manufacturers you can use them from. Usually any turbo motor that operates off the allowed voltage is permitted. And basically what a turbo motor is, is just a motor. It's generally a very small and less powerful motor as well as an absolute, well, a usually absolute encoder and, and an onboard controller that holds the motor at a desired position. So what this means is that you don't have to worry about all that code of tuning PID controllers and all that. It's all built into the servos. So then all you have to do as a programmer is tell the servo to go to a position and hold it there and, and it'll do it for you and generally it works very well. But generally the motors are very weak as I mentioned, otherwise they get really expensive. So you're gonna need these for less intensive applications. Um, you're also allowed to use a wide variety of sensors uh, from things like optical and ultrasonic distance sensors to light and color sensors, gyroscopes, and a lot more. So definitely come through that list and look at common part vendors like Revs has a lot of sensors. That's mainly what everyone's coming to now. And you're also allowed to use an external webcam. We'll get into that on, on the videos about vision later. So now we're going to move on to programming in FPC after talking about all the basic high-level stuff about the control system. So Android is built upon Java, so naturally this is the language that Android apps were coded in, and as such, what FPC recommends you code in because they built their platform upon Java as well. It is possible if you use other languages. However, for beginners and the majority of FPC people who aren't really familiar with, with other programming languages, I would really recommend just sticking with Java, most good example things for FEC and the tutorials are going to be in Java just because that's what everyone starts out with. I started out with Java and FEC and so I definitely recommend sticking with Java for now. And so yeah, you have three options for kind of your coding tool or however you want to call it. Uh, first up is Android Studio. So this is what professional Android developers use to make their apps. It is what the FEC apps were made in, of course. And so kind of what you're doing in Android Studio is you're getting the source more or less for the FTC app and then you're changing the part where you, put where you would put team code and then you're rebuilding the app and putting it back on the phone. And so as such, since this is a professional program, there's a lot more features and they really make coding a lot easier and faster if you know what you're doing. Then it also makes using external libraries like a computer vision library. So you, you of course don't want to learn how to learn all these things about computer vision and do it yourself you can just install a library and use that instead. So that's really nice. However, it is a somewhat complicated setup. It's also a slower builds and things can get confusing, things can go wrong, and it can be pretty overwhelming sometimes if you don't really know what's going on. 
Uh, that's why I recommend for most beginners is for them to use Onbot Java. So Onbot Java is built into the robot controller. It's very easy to get started with, but it does have less features and it makes it very difficult to use external libraries and the like. And so really for Onbot Java, it's just so simple to get started with and just dive right into programming. That's why I really think it's good for beginners since they're not really gonna get snagged up on some weird issue with Android Studio. It's gonna take them a long time to resolve and might put them off in programming. It's very easy to access on by Java. And really, you're, you're only gonna run into limitations later on. You start moving to a more advanced stuff and it's not hard at all to just move your code over to Android Studio. So if you're brand new to programming, you wanna stick to on by Java. And then there's also blocks. I have kind of mixed feelings about blocks. It's a drag and drop interface. Of course, what blocks does is it's kind of like Scratch where you, you're dragging and drop these pieces of code and then the phone will turn and those drag and drops into real code that has proper structure and then run that. Um, it's very approachable for complete beginners who are who are very off put by all the text of programming, but I really recommend just trying text-based programming with actual Java, just because, well, it, well, it may seem daunting at first, you will, you will get the hang of it, and once you kind of understand what's happening, it'll be a lot easier to continue on, and you're, all, and you're not gonna be as limited as you are by blocks. And things can get pretty um, difficult to manage with blocks as well, just because of the nature of how things are set up. Our Android Studio setup, I'm not really going to go too much into this. Um, I might add in a thing of me actually doing it, but you're going to download and install Android Studio from the link. All the link from this video will, will be in the description, so it's easy to click. And so if you follow the prompts, install Android Studio, pretty simple. And then you're going to go to this link, which is the public code repository for the FTC SDK. I'm going to have a whole episode on going over what this means and kind of what this what, um, what the SDK gives you. And then you're going to download the zip file for that, extract it, and then you're going to open the project in, in Android Studio, and you'll be set up to go. Um, you'll you'll have the code there and. I'll kind of be guiding you through that linear episode and what to kind of do first. Of course, some settings you'll have to change. You'll have to disable instant run and also change some settings in your RC phone in order, to, in order to be able to deploy to it. There are a lot of great guides out there. I have some links later on in the, in the slideshow that have more complete guides. Like if you get caught in a step or something, you'll you'll know what to do. So next is Onbot Java. Once again, Onbot Java is very easy. There's no real setup. Just kind of, this is just kind of how to access it. But they're using a control hub for the Android phone is pretty much the same. There's going to be an IP address. And so really all this will entail is you going to the either the app or just following the instructions um, because what the either control hub or phone does is host a server. Once you connect to its Wi-Fi direct network, you can simply navigate to this IP address and then you have the whole console there and Onbot Java is part of this and you'll click on the Onbot Java tab and you'll be ready to go. And so yeah, that pretty much wraps up this episode. Here are some more resources. I definitely recommend checking out this first one that I put. It's the it's kind of like a complete guide to the control system written by the people who made who made the FTC control system. And so I definitely recommend checking that out. All this will be linked below, and there's also the game manual part one that I mentioned earlier. And so all your homework is for this episode for, for this week is to if you don't have your control system yet, definitely look into ordering that. Uh, talk with your coach and. Um, um, make, make sure to get that early so that you're ready to start with season starts, get everything set up so you can follow up these tutorials. If you do have your control system, make sure everything is set up, um, kind of follow the tutorials from first, um, from especially that control one that I sent, make sure everything's working. And then for Android Studio, just try and uh, just try and deploy that basic app, that just, just the controller to your phone and make sure everything's opening, you can deploy right if there's any errors. Try and work that out, feel free to email us, our email is in the description as well. And then for Onbot Java, just make sure that you're able to get into the Onbot Java section of the robot controller. So, all right. Um, so yeah, make sure to subscribe for the, for, for the rest of the series as well as the other series we're doing. And I'll see you next week.